So today we are going to talk about the example 5.12 stress at different stages for concrete for a composite section in pre-stress concrete. So let's jump into the example. So first look at the uh, question. The mid-span section of a composite beam is shown in figure 537. So this is the figure 537. Uh, the precast stem is 300 by 920 millimeter deep, is post tension with an initial force of 2450 kilonewton. So, this is the bottom part. This wave is basically precast, that is 300 millimeter in width and 920 millimeter in depth. The effective pre stress after the loss is taken 2150 kilonewton. That means it was initially 2450. So there has been a 300 kilonewton loss, and that's why it's 250 kilonewton. And the moment due to the weight of that precast section, that means this precast section, 300 millimeter by 920 millimeter, due to this precast section weight, there is a 270 kilonewton meter moment at mid span. So mid span, we are talking about the mid span. So after it is erected in place, the top slab of 150 millimeter by 920 millimeter. That means this top flange, its thickness is 150 millimeter and width is 920 uh, millimeter wide to be cast in place. So this is precast portion and this above part is the casting portion. So this casting portion will uh, produce a moment of 135 kilonewton meter. So after the slab has hardened, that means once it's erected and like casted and we allow some time to make it, uh, to become it hardened. So after it's become hardened, so this is the precast portion, this is the cast in situ portion. And after the, it is hardened, we are allowing a live load moment of 750 kilonewton meter uh, to be carried by this composite section. So what we have been asked, we have been asked to compute the stress in the section at various stages. So we have to calculate the stresses at various stages. Okay, so there are some additional data that has been provided in this uh, question. So for example, the rectangular section, it has an area of 2.76 into 10 to the power 5. That means this bottom part, 300 times 3, 920 will give the area this part and the composite section. This is the upper part of composite section. So 920 times 300, so this will, uh, uh, and plus 150 times 920 will give the upper, the whole composite section area. So if we look into it, so this is the precast portion area, 920 times 300, and this is the composite area. So it's, if it is not given in the question, you, you will have to, we'll have to calculate it. Now about the moment of inertia, since the precast portion, it is rectangular, so the centroid will be at the mid height. So we can calculate the moment of inertia directly. So this is the formula like 300 times 90 bh cube over 12. So we can find out this uh, initial portion, the precast portion. But for the composite section, since it is a T section and it is not symmetric, we have to calculate the centroid first. So this is the uh, centroid formula. Since this is two part, the bottom part and the top part, and we assume the bottom part is a one and the top part is a two. So Y1, A1 plus Y2, A2 divided by A1 plus A2 will give us the centroid uh, axis location. And we can find out the centroid moment of inertia like bh cube by 12 plus a d square plus for the bottom part and the bh cube. So this is 920 times 150 cube divided by bh cube plus a d square equals to this. So this is composite section. So we, if we are not provided with this table, then we have to calculate it manually. So let's move on to the solution. So eccentricity, the eccentricity is uh, 460 minus 200. So how can we find, find that? So the location of the uh, steel is 200 millimeter above the bottom. Since this is 920, so the CGC for the precast section will be at the mid height. That means 460. From 460, okay, let me use my pen. 
So this will be location of CGC and this is CGS. So this is the this is our eccentricity. So we can find out this eccentricity as 460 minus 200. So this will give us 260. So it's, it has been mentioned in the next page. So <clears throat> this is eccentricity, basically. Uh, now, uh, at the beginning stage, immediately after pre-stressing, we know uh, if we want to find out this stress, the stress F equals to F over A plus minus F E Y over I and M Y over I. So let's go back and see uh, what are the values given here. So initially, the stress, uh, the force was 2,450. So we can say that, okay, so this is 2,450. So F over A, so the A is 2.76 into 10 to the power 5. So it's clear. Now F, e, F we have uh, calculated. So since the 10 to the power 3 is basically to convert it from kilonewton to newton. So we are considering the above portion has a unit of newton and the bottom portion has an unit of millimeter. So newton per uh, millimeter. So this is millimeter square. It, it will give us the MPA, so the Newton per millimeter square or megapascal. So we converted all the kilonewton into Newton, so 10 to the power three, and this is eccentricity 260, and this is Y, basically, what is Y? Since our uh, uh, precast section has uh, 300 and uh, 920, so this, is, this will be 460. So top fiber will have also 460, and bottom fiber will have also 460. So basically this is Y. And this is I. I since it is a precast section for only at beginning stage. So 1.95 into 10 to the power 10. So similarly the moment, the precast section has a moment uh, that is uh, 270. Uh, ten, uh, the 10 to the power 6 is basically from kilonewton meter to kilonewton millimeter. So this is that's why we use 10 to the power 6. And this is Y and this is I. So if we just simplify, it looks like this. And for the top section, since FUY will create uh, tension in the top and the compression at the bottom. So that's why for the top fiber is plus and the form for the bottom fiber is minus. And for the load, MY by I is the opposite. So we can easily find out this. Now, uh, after the loss is exactly the same after the loss since the stress has been changed from 2450 to 2150. So we just replace this uh, equal, uh, this 2450 by 2150. So everything is similar. So this is the top fiber stress and this is the bottom fiber stress. And if we look at this, uh, after pouring the slab, the moment will be increased. This is the precast portion moment, and this is the uh, moment due to the uh, pouring of or casting of the slab. This is 135. So that's why I just add 270 plus 135. So everything is similar. So we can easily find out the top fiber stress and the bottom fiber stress. So after the cast, uh, top slab is hardened, we, app, we allow them to carry the live load. So live load moment was 750 uh, kilonewton meter. So we convert it into uh, a newton millimeter. That's why we have multiply it by 10 to the power six. And this 432 and uh, 638, basically, this is the uh, location of the center. So if we go back, let's see. If we go back, the center location is basically 638.33. So they, they just, uh, in the book, they just uh, uh, round it uh, down. So uh, here I just mention it uh, so that you can understand it easily, the location of the centroid basically so this portion this portion is basically this portion if we think 
if we just simplify it, this will be 638. So if in your uh, exam or in your uh, solve, you just use it uh, 638.33, okay? And then it's, you can just subtract it so that you find the uh, distance to the top fiber. Basically, this is So you have the location of the CGC. This is 638 for the bottom fiber. And the, for the top fiber, you'll have to use this distance. So this distance will be this. Now, if we want to uh, uh, find the combined stress, because we have uh, calculated the stress at different uh, stages. The, at the, uh, immediately after the pre-stressing, and after the loss of pre stress and after pouring of the slab and live load producing uh, the moment. So, A, B, C, D, we have denoted it by A, B, C, D. So, if we want to find the combined stress, like and depict in, in the picture, picture, you see here the at the initial stage, uh, we calculated the bottom fiber and the top fiber. Here we see the we haven't considered the top fiber. Because if we if we think about like the beam is something like this, okay. Maybe I ju just draw try to draw it in a, uh, a freehand sketch type. So initially, the top slab is not considered, uh, uh, so there is no stress on it. So initially, it's minus two, two point minus uh, point two two and seventeen point five four. So we don't have the top slab. And immediate after the loss is also the same. We don't have any top fiber. And after that, uh, we are allowing the uh, beam to uh, like take the live load. So this is for the live load. And this is uh, the uh, precast plus moment due to the uh, slab casting. So here we didn't consider the hardening of the slab, but here we have considered that. So. To have the final situation, we have to just add them up to find out the final stress. So how did we get this value? This value and this value. So we have calculated this value from the uh, from our math, mathematics. So we can calculate this. How do you calculate this? We just add up C and D. So at the top level, at the top level, uh, for this left part, we have zero stress. And for this right part, we have 7.01. So if we just add them up, we get minus 7.01. So, so this is this is basically negative. It should be negative. So this is a uh, compressive stress. And for the middle part, mid level is also the same, minus 4.16, and this is uh, 4.57. If we just uh, add them two, then we can get this value. So this is a little bit higher. And then at the bottom level, we had 11.42 and here plus 10.36. So this was negative, minus 11.42. So ultimately we have minus 1.46. So our whole, whole, whole the section is still in compression. So this is the uh, final stress. So we, uh, in this example, uh, what we did, we calculated the stress at the different stages and then we represent them in um, graphs. So that's it. Thank you.